Hello everyone and welcome to Hack the Mountains 3.0 where on behalf of the entire HTM team I Samriddhi Srivastava will would like to welcome you to this community based hackathon where we are regularly conducting such webinars and sessions for uh, developing your uh, your strength, uh, skills in order to strengthen your skills uh, and help you perform better in the upcoming hackathon today we are going to have a webinar presentation by the absolutely phenomenal miss mile gupta she is an engineer at razorpay which currently uh, is one of the india's leading unicorn companies uh, miss mile is going to talk about uh, uh, the topic diving into the vast area of front end development i could go on and on about how phenomenal she is but i'll let her do the introduction herself over to you ma'am yeah hey, i thank you somebody for such a nice warm welcome hey hi hi everyone i hope you all are doing well um as somebody quoted a lot about me i'm smile i work as a front end engineer in resupay and yeah uh, that's like pretty much about me uh, what what else about me some fun things i am a quite active on twitter like i have taken some break because of my work but yeah i tweet a lot about javascript front end and react and things on those lines and i'm total nerd means you can expect a lot of nerdy stuff out of me yeah that's pretty much about me i am uh, like since we all are here on sunday i assure you that i'll give you a lot of knowledge which i have for front end development and you will also love front end just like me so maybe can you share my slides please yeah so as the title says it's like diving into the vast area of front end development i'll make sure that whatever i know about front end how i got started i'll tell you people in detail how you can also get started with that so what generally i do in any presentation before i you know mug up into all the technical things let's see some of the means around front end so it's though i have already always listened that you should never explain memes but again i'll i love to explain memes so the stick is saying like how did you get like this to a front end engineer and he said i do a push up every time i get a css issue lols front end is all about you know it's a lot about fixing css things then again very common thing i'll give you one minute to digest this like let digest this meme it says i heard you want to be a uh, you know web developer here are few devices you have to test things on it was in older times it was very easy web development was only you know having one device making things out of it and that's it your work is done no now it's not like that i'm not scaring multi app you have it's very uh, critical like there is something called responsive designs i'll talk it out in the next segments but you have to take care a lot about how things look in all these devices then oh god if you are a front end engineer you would relate to me or if you are a designer if not by end of this presentation you will you know you'll be able to relate to it galaxy fold is one of the smallest phones it's even you know it's with this less than 270 pixel and it's very difficult to make it responsive so you know adapt up like that oh then oh my god i uh, you know a programming tip you know you know code the javascript under the water so that nobody can see you crying god javascript is scary but on the other hand if you like it it's very interesting too and then again some about some things about new new nuances about javascript though it's tricky but it's fun at the other time and then what else we see when we hear about front end one guy says what are you in for this fellow in jail me saying double murder then this guy had an accusation that you know he law he broke somebody's code oh god that is really scary then again this is one of the common things that how web development world or the front end world changes so frequently like you know in one minute every now and then a new framework comes oh god this is 
I guess once you start into front end or web development, you will relate to it. At one point of the time, you say, oh, I know a lot about front end. I'm being confident about it. Some new framework, some new library that will come in your face. My intent for showing some different memes, some diversified memes about CS, JS frameworks, it was not intended to scare you, but just to show you, see, why do we people create memes? Since it is fun, the topics are fun, people are loving it so much, that is why they're creating memes out of it. So yeah, I'm sure you will also love frontend. I would absolutely love frontend. It's been two and a half years. I am into this frontend world. So let's get started on the Excel stuff. Before this, I just want to say you one thing. He always remember this thing. As a front-end engineer, to our role, like we have in this world, right? Somebody is like a UX designer and one is a UI engineer, right? And in, if we talk about day, not our projects, but in day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day work, see, designers give us a design and we just have to convert that Figma design into code. But one tip I leave you, since you are a front-end engineer, since you are a UI engineer, your role, job is not just to clone the Insta, uh, this Figma, right? Your job is to give constructive feedback at points. If it's not appeal, if the UI is not appealing to you, you should always stick with the designer. So that's what I quoted. A UI interface is a like a joke. If you have to explain it, no, then it's not good. UI is, should be something that should be self-explainable. So coming next. So let's get into this, you know, actual things. So how you can even get started with front end. One thing I'll quote you is, in this presentation, you will see a lot of jargons, literally a lot of jargons. You don't have to worry about this, okay, I'll take a copy and pen, I'll just jot it down a lot of things. No, don't worry about it. There would be jargons. All the important jargons I have already put in, in into the presentation, okay? And then how you can excel it because it's like, you know, you have to dive into this front end world. So how you can dive it? Because if you see, I'll, I'll be very honest, see on the YouTube and search, you know, good resources for uh, learning JavaScript. You will end up seeing hundreds of resources. Now, you will not sit you know, one by one, one by one, one by one to see, okay, this is good, this is not good, oh, what is good, etc., etc. So I have added, I have handpicked a lot of resources which you can use. And, you know, these are my best resources from where this is like this, this resource list I have created by, you know, years of experimenting around different tutorials. Okay. So let's get started. Okay, just one call out. If you have at any point of the time, if you will have any question, any doubt, just feel free to paste it on comments. And I'll, trust me, I'll answer all the questions. So it's, if I think about web development or anybody, if uh, you know, we ask any techie person, what is web development all about? People will say it's, you know, HTML, CSS and JavaScript, right? So if I have to break these HTML, CSS, JavaScript during tech, uh, in the technical things, like what exactly HTML do, what exactly CSS do, and what exactly JavaScript do. If you see in this picture, I have added three robots. One, which is just a skeleton. One, that is the fancy version of the Spider-Man. And the third is like, you know, Spider-Man doing some action. So, so same is with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is just like core structure, the bones, right? We have a head, we have body, right? We we have a name, like we have a title, and we have some sub 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 parts. So it's like the structure. And then if you build now that that white, just plain structure that looks spooky. Why? Because you know what? It gives me that resemblance of a skull. It looks spooky to me. Then it's like spooky as in not likable, scary, not understandable. So just to beautify it, we have added colors, we have added some mask to it. That is how CSS. CSS is something that makes things uh, you know presentable. Then uh, you know once the things are presentable, now what? I say I have a toy that doesn't do nothing. 
then what is it even use i okay it's a fine it's a shoe piece but not all our toys are shoe piece right so we need some action some dynamism so that dynamism that functionality javascript brings this is just the highlight of html css and javascript let me show you with the code example how these three things are different so say i uh, i have three buttons the stuff is not working on stream yard but i'll tell you what happens is that i have coded a simple button that is that says apply now now on the css it's like you know a fancy button and apply now you would see nothing is happening for us now but what i have done is that on click of this you know apply now you can see a form and things on those lines some action is there so that is handled by javascript so i hope you have some clarity on what is html what is css and what is javascript okay are you wait oh one second um uh, samrit it's possible to add my uh, screen to this oh yeah i just show it on a slide to model let's see can yeah so this is the javascript button i was talking about you can see all this name uh, you know email and phone number so i was coming to this now uh, we have seen all the, these three different things uh, you know apply apply now and javascript now what else now let's deep dive into all these three things first so if as the name suggests html is this hypertext markup language so generally if we see this uh, if i simply talk about in our colleges also people teaches the html they teaches such uh, this you know head tag body tag title tag etc so html yes html is that only it's not key it's very difficult so it's simple structure only so what i have done is that uh, with the every resource since it's the session is all about diving into front end so all the resources i have added i'll just give you quick walk through of all the resources so i have added here a blog i'll share this slide after uh, the session with you all so, okay wait so if i'll click on it so i have added a geek for geeks ka blog here you can you know see all this common tags like what is head what is body how you can use title then what are is heading tags span div and all so basically the intent is that you read this blog with a thorough mind it comprises of most used tags that's more than enough the tags mentioned in this if you read about that you will you are sorted for i'll not say you are sorted for the life but your fundamentals are strong if ever in the you know requirement you need a chance to have to implement it some xit it's the thing probably you will be able to implement with this else you can um, implement using you know read about it but yeah the basic basic these tags are there then uh, once you have learned about tags i'll be very honest chair a lot of people are very uh, you know scared about you know adding form validations you know how to deal it with uh, deal with forms and things on those lines i am one of the, those persons who know i have done form validations a lot of times still i get scared so once you have learned about the basic html tags right next thing you should always read is that html forms like you know what is this form now what are the form elements label input button select area then field set legend data list output uh, option uh, opt group not all you have to read but basically label input button select and text area that is something you, you should definitely read again telling from my experience if you will not read it now right when you are starting at one point of the time this will actually haunt you i have not read when i was starting so it still haunts me so don't do my mistake then 
yeah so once you've cleared with you know all this html uh, key tags and forms i am suggesting you so it's like that front end is not front end basically everything in the software world it's all about you know making projects reading experimenting reading experiment so what i'll suggest is that key uh, after you learned a concept right make as many as projects out of it possible some of the project ideas i am giving you here using this concepts only this one block and the other block you can make a survey form that will actually help you uh, understand all the form elements you have read it in the blog too then make a basic landing page it's possible using you know tape like old fashioned when there was no html css oh sorry not css but not css was not that advanced even now it happens i'll tell you one case but people used to make all these elements right a landing page using tables like one a head tag here one head tag there and it's current uh, still also used like if you see right if people have to make uh, uh, what do you call templates email templates using conventional html css things this still write inline css and they use table tags to make it so i'll suggest try making one landing page or a restaurant website or a event website without using css using table tags trust me you will learn a lot in that though it would be a little boring but yes then one of the most interesting uh, thing not interesting things but one of the most recommended things like about this forms only like i quoted two minutes back i was very scared i am still scared about uh, seeing forms so google had introduced this very good course on forms just watch it out i have i have already added the link here once you get the doc you can see it it's really good so once you have learned about this html elements then this forms trust me you don't have to even look back and your fundamentals are very strong one thing i have learned over again over these years is that if you want to excel excel in this web development domain your three things should be uh, you know very strong one is the html then one is css then one is the javascript if your this thing is strong right then you don't need to worry about anything and you can if everything that comes any new from framework it would be just like a kick off for you so just focus on this uh, core fundamentals if i say about the time you know it takes one week in a regular day right you can obviously be great in uh, html one week is also too much two to three days you spend in a focused four five hours you are good so once our html is, is done then you might be asking what next so remember that uh, diagram of the robots html the uh, structure is done now the next thing which we should learn is that css so yeah again a uh, css is vast but i am adding some things like you know how we can uh, get started what is the checklist that you should always know while doing css so one is this you know how to add uh, like i am assuming you are a complete noob how you want, how we can add css to html there are three ways to add it one is this inline one is internal one is external again i have added a blog link here you might be thinking why i did added a lot of blogs and not video tutorials in these cases i have added video tutorials in the subsequent sections but in this case i want you to read through the blog once we are reading right we get a lot of different kind of understanding which will not be able to uh, you know have or which will not be able to grasp by seeing a what you call video so let me click here so it talks about you know what is css and three methods how you can apply css inline internal and external i'm not getting into the syntax but yeah this is three things the most easy thing in uh, the css thing okay the next thing is that again i am giving you one road map which i fall no i i did not fall it to be honest but it's like right after you know uh, years of failing succeeding means i can have a sequence okay if you after this you would have learned this then you would be great so next thing once you know right how to add this positions 
Oh, sorry. How to uh, import a CSS to your HTML? Then what is position? This is really a very uh, important concept. So you might have seen uh, some things, you know, position absolute, position fixed, position relative. People, what people do that is, you know, uh, they just what? It's like guessing, okay, position absolute did not work, position relative may work. Something of those lines, just a guessing game. No, it's CSS, people say that, you know, CSS is all about experiment. You don't know, there are a lot of properties, IO, then what we will do, like this and that. But now CSS have also logic. So just read a lot about this, uh, you know, positions. Once, I mean, after learning this, uh, how to add uh, HTML to your, uh, for how to add CSS to your HTML, learn about these positions. Again, it will help you in uh, you know, times to come. Like what is static, what is sticky, relative, fixed and absolute. Again, um, this W3 schools have a lot of um, articles. I'm just pointing it out to one, right? This is really good read. Just again, one thumbs up. I'll say you here is when you are reading, right? Try to play around with it since it's like you know try it yourself some experiments maybe make a code pen out of it practice so it's like read practice read practice read practice and then uh, again then once you are done with it then the next thing you should always read about is that flex boxes like you know a lot of people cry or a lot there are a lot of memes about it you would have seen that is what is the most difficult thing to do in css what is it like people say right how to centrally centrally align a div right that is there it's just because people are so confused they don't know about positions they don't know about flexbox that is one reason they are like hey, oh how to center align these things there are multiple ways to do it. One is that if you make it position, you know, relative, uh, then you can 50% from top margin auto. There is a lot of ways. One of the easiest ways to do it is in Flexbox. Also, uh, you know, um, again, I was in the initially slides, in that meme slides, I was talking about how one now these days, when you want to develop things, you have to develop, uh, uh, what do you call it, in this fashion, like, um, of what fashion i mean it's like you know responsive designs should be there so flex is one of the easiest ways to make your designs responsive so i'm just adding a blog out of here just it will tell you right what is you know how uh, this flex is made up of ah just one call out this is something again you uh, it will help you a lot whenever you are uh, you know making any project any real life project and then and you are using say i'm using flexbox on this okay then uh, always see if say my project i'm taking once an example i am say i am making this email template okay again i'm coming to that email template so now i use there is something called can i use okay just always use this can i use say i'm using writing here flex okay so it will tell me in what browsers flex is supported like chrome edge safari opera i you know any mobile browsers anything so it's basically like this okay can i use and if you are developing uh, some templates so can i use email i'll just uh, do quickly can i use email here also so i'm writing flex so it's like once when you are using any uh, css or html or uh, not html basically css or javascript things right so based upon uh, what browser you want to cover right search this property in either can i use or can i use email okay and then apply it and uh, one whenever you are reading the documentation right be, be you know this web3 schools or mdm also have amazing documentation so always read this browser support this will help you evaluating okay this browser my code is compatible and it will not end up breaking your app on certain browsers that is what responsive web designs is by the way 
So it talks about three things, flex container, flex item, and how to make flex responsive. Just read all about it. And you trust in half an hour to one hour, you will be great with flexes. I'll just close it up. Then uh, after you have read about flex, the next thing I suggest you to read is that CSS main grids. What are grids? It's like, you know, dividing your screen into 12 boxes, you know, how, how many boxes you want to take, three boxes, five boxes, seven boxes, rows, columns, like a tabular structure. That grids will tell you. Just read about it. That's super helpful, again, in making designs responsive. Again, I'm focusing about, uh, on the word de making designs responsive because these days everybody we are trying to have everybody to have uh, access to their internet. Uh, this everybody have access to internet. So everybody, be it a person having small device, be it a person having big device, every should uh, try to make your code in such a way that it should not break into any other device. So again, grids are again one of the good ways by which you can achieve this responsiveness. Then again, uh, some common projects. I'll suggest what do you mean? So one the one project, if you're learning CSS right, I, this is my recommendation, my suggestion, or whatever you uh, consider. But you should always create a component library. Now, what do you, uh, you might be saying, OK, here are, I have listened about JavaScript library, React library. Now, what the heck is this component library? Component library is nothing but, but you have heard about some things called style frameworks. We have this bootstrap, we have Bulma, we have material UI, we have this chakra, right? Uh, so all these, what are these? They are frameworks only. They are frameworks of CSS, right? So component library is like you making your version of bootstrap. You are making your version of material UI. I'll show you one I have made. Hmm. Let me show you one I have made. I'll just give you an example. So like one component library, I'll give you an example. This is what I coded. So like how you can install it, then how you can do in the documentation. Like we generally have, right, other words, avatar, badges, buttons, form fields, simplify, uh, grids, images, so something like that. You should make it on your own. So you might be think, what is the practical use of it? In the end of in any projects, I'll not use this comp uh, my component library. I'll use this uh, external tools only now, but it will help you, you know, strengthen your concepts. So yeah, this component library. Then, you know, making a parallax website, parallax website when there are a lot of images, then they scroll like that. Try making that. And all the HTML projects I have mentioned in my previous slide, try to make them using CSS and try to make them beautiful using maybe flags, grids, and things on those lines. Then CSS is not only about that. These are just the fundamentals, okay? Like adding, positioning, grids, uh, then flexbox. These are just the basics. What else? Some things like again, I'm saying CSS is an ocean. You don't have to learn a lot of things in getting started, right? But some things, some things like you know what is responsive web design. Some concepts of this I explained. Now there is also something called adaptive. I'll not tell you what is adaptive, but you read about it. I have already added a blog here. Responsive versus adaptive. Just open this blog and read it up. I have added one on responsive web designs. Then there are some things called pseudo classes. Pseudo classes are nothing but uh, you know classes that we want uh, element should have before. Uh, it's like that. Okay, in simple words, if I do it, okay. you have a div, you add some classes to it. Say you know border is equals to ten pixel. Some classes you want to render on the div either before or after the component is loaded. That is done using pseudo classes. Um, if I give you very, uh, you know, a simple example where pseudo classes are used is you all have used checkbox, right? So in the checkboxes, the checkbox, if you have to try making a checkbox using say button, right? How you can make that is you can make that using this uh, pseudo classes. Even the tool tips, right? If you want to implement a tool tip on your own, you have to use pseudo class again for that. Then yes, again, I'll give you one more programming tip here. 
again telling from my experience once you start working into companies or any you know any or any open source project try to write your code in such a fashion that think from this perspective i am the initial maintainer of this project tomorrow some other person will come and they have to work on this project if you will not write the project in a good way right uh, it will still work but the other person the other you know succeeding developer they will end up cursing you or you know he is like you know oh my god kaise developer tha is a waste of time so try to write a good code that so that it's maintainable in future so just read about what is pseudo classes then what is variables and you are good to go these concepts are more than enough it's like that c web development or front end development is like an ocean you can't learn all the things in one shot and you should not also aim right you know i should be perfect in css perfect in the css in is that means you know you can make that fancy css arts using other css no 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 not required in the real world whatever topics i have mentioned here that's more than enough And then again, some fun things around CSS. How to accelerate? Uh, again, this is very interesting game. Flexbox Froggy, Froggy. If you want to, act, uh, you know, revise your flex concepts, just I have added this link in the chat section. Just open it up and play this game. You will love it. You will end up learning a lot of flex using it. Then uh, there is something called Grid Garden. Just like Flexbox Froggy, there is another thing called Grid Garden. Just try this game out. Spend one hour, and you will be very confident about grids. Okay. Then again, this is one of my suggestions. If you want to excel in flex, just try to make some, uh, you know, some project like this. This project I have created when I was learning Flexbox, like you know, flex direction के लिए, uh, uh, just you know, how it works on row, row, reverse, things on those lines. And like all the properties which are available with flex, a parent and flex, a child element, I have created some small small pieces out of it. You can also create it; it's fun. And then yeah, and then there are two more Google courses which you can uh, you know Google have provided some good courses. You can uh, one is around CSS. It's really a good one. You can visit it. Uh, you will end up learning a lot of things. You just don't. I'll give you one example. So it it have some twenty nine to thirty chapters. You don't need to see all the chapters all at once. You can see the initial ones. Then once there is a requirement, right? Then only you can jump into like animations, um, you know, gradients. There are some complex kind of things that you will be able to understand. I'm not saying that you will never use it. You will use it. You will be able to understand also, but again, at once when you are just starting, it can be overwhelming. And then you know, some there is one good course about responsive designs. Just look through it. You will get to understand what exactly I was trying to make out of it. Right, flex, uh, then flex box grids. There one way to make uh, responsive designs. Yeah, and a lot also do read about media queries. Media queries are also used in some cases. Again, not spoiling. They are also used in adaptive designs. Also, just read about it again. So now, folks, like we have seen how we can excel in this JavaScript, uh, HTML, and CSS. Now, until that point, once we 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 might be or we not well, if we are not aware of concepts of Git tight or concepts of version controlling, we will be doing all these things on our machine only. But If you have done, uh, you know, you have tried, you know, using CSS only. Uh, uh, you have started making static pages with HTML and CSS. The one thing you should here learn here now is that, you know, you should learn how to deploy your code. That's very important. Like in our schools, I remember in my school, HTML and CSS was taught. And after that, these both things are done. They had added a full stop. That's it. Is ke baad we will not teach, but. One of the uh, important milestones after this step is that learn how to deploy your code. Before deploying your code, learn how to push your code on any GitHub, on any you know code uh, versioning tools, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, anything. And then you should know how to deploy code, your code, not just using only one technique, but two, three other techniques. The most common techniques these days are. Deploying code using Netlify, then code deploying using Versal, and deploying using GitHub Pages. 
try this out i have not i have intentionally not added some resources to do that i want you to google it out and you know see some tutorials and try it out on your own so yeah so uh, if you have at this point you have learned html and css i have i'm i i work in raspberry right i work in one of the legacy pro code, codes so uh, it's like the code is written 8 years ago and it's still it's somewhat it's like since it's legacy right a lot of developers have used it it sometimes it's messy and it's like that key some a developer added some styling to some particular element now you want to change it sometimes you can't change that simply that style you have to override it or you know you have to redo it you have to do how you can you know there is a concept called specificity in the css how you, you have to make that specificity more so the that places if you have a deep knowledge about css right it helps you a lot and you will not end up reading a lot of blogs just to see how to make such certain elements so coming to the next part again fundamentals are very strong i'll suggest you to spend at least two weeks on css so that you can be very excellent in this so once the css is done the next comes is this javascript so javascript is something that makes people cry makes people happy makes people curious makes people stressed out so javascript is that person so mm, i'll give you uh, i'll tell you from my experience uh, having the essentials uh, having the fundamentals strong in javascript is very 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 important these days see i'll tell you again we will not directly see uh, in, if i talk about in the real world we'll obviously using any framework correct so we'll not directly write, write html css but javascript is something we will use it so if you have a strong fundamentals in javascript then only you will be able to go places so certain things again uh, i have mentioned only essential things uh, two slides i have mentioned some essential things that you should know but yes javascript is more than this also so one thing you should always know is that see whenever we are learning a new programming language we always start with like how to write if conditions and then how to write variables how to write switch cases and things on those lines this javascript essential i have added here a co video course okay it's a youtube uh, course just 3 hours and see it you will get to know a lot of javascript fundamentals and then now we say i have three methods to have um, uh, what do you call a uh, jar we have this you know um three types of variables const let and uh, Well, so how is these different? How do JavaScript concept actually runs, right? How the JavaScript code is rendered? I know that is not practically you will not be using, but if you know things under the hood, right? How things are happening, you it will actually help you in the uh, you know developing interest. So you can always see I've added. If you are a friend in engineer, you would be knowing a playlist called Namaste JavaScript. So. If, I did the link of Namaste JavaScript here. Treat it as you know binge watching. We binge watch a lot of things over the weekend. Some weekend, if you are you know bored, I suggest binge watch this interesting series called Namaste JavaScript. You will end up learning a lot, and you will end up falling in love with JavaScript. Then yes, one of the most interesting concepts and you know uh, most used concepts that is DOM manipulation. so dom manipulation is that how you can edit the html how you can edit the dom using javascript if you know if you don't know uh, dom man manipulation so nicely it will not impact a lot in your day to day life trust me on that one ki you will not directly manipulate dom using html or uh, using javascript because these days we have frameworks but how these frameworks are built they are built on top of dom manipulation react is built on top of dom manipulation so read about this dom manipulation very nicely and this is one of the favorite interview questions you know interviewers to ask while having some coding rounds then um, again i have added a very good online course on it you can just see it okay then 
now it's it says we we say that or it said that ki time and ja, uh, time and tide in javascript waits for none javascript is a synchronous synchronous language right but then what is this promises what is this a sync await so how javascript is synchronous and at that same time it's having async behavior so that you will find us in this playlist there is one a uh, very good person called tapas he have created a very nice uh, playlist on this five videos just amazingly have explained just go and watch it out then yes now every time now we have learned about you know this uh for loops which that basic javascript essentials then i have also learned about how javascript works under the hood then i know this dom manipulation thing then i know async javascript but in real life we have to call apis also right how will the front end get a uh, content from the back end so that's what the fifth topic i have added is that is fetching in javascript we read about it 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 tells about it's a small video like 6 7 minutes video how fetch api works in javascript read about it and if you are clear with uh, you know how fetch api works that's it i um, mean uh, then there are some things called axioms then there is something called json fetch everything will be sorted if you know the essentials if you know the fundamentals how fetch api works then next I um, you mean know, means it's very also important if you want to code on day to day things right then you know what are the basic, uh, people say that you know front end engineers don't have to write a lot of data structures yeah that's true you know but there are certain data structures you should always know that is arrays strings and objects so i have added a playlist of there are certain fifth no 15 5 to 10 uh javascript array methods that are very handy while developing things read about them again it is added in it in this playlist then string methods how you can manipulate strings how you can manipulate objects so like you know uh, you know uh, like you know one blog i have added about object then you know what are the commonly used object methods then keys entries and values and how you, how you can copy an object you might be seeing i added copying object you might be thinking i have added it in uh, it would be simple only you know a is equals to b something on those lines no copying object can be way way more tricky because you know it have different levels of nesting so do read about copying objects it is again uh, you know a lot of people end up having this bug right when they have to copy object or it's again it's one of the good identifications then the next thing one person should always know about js is that you know one is that you know how uh, this uh, always you should be knowing it's not mentioned in this slide but you know how i our uh, chrome browser we have this element tab we have this console tab we have this network tab right so how does this work then there is we have one tab called application there we have this local storage session storage cookies how these what are these how does this work you should always know because these will help you whenever you will connect your front end to a back end right there would be jwt token there would be cookies you know you have to store some things in session you have to store some things in local storage how will you do that so the fundamental of these jwt and you know authentication is this local storage session storage and cookies just so i have added a very small 15 minute video have a look on it and you your concepts will be clear here now i have added a lot of you know theory things okay you should know language essentials you should know about arrays you should know about objects you should know what is dom manipulation what will i do out of it again i told you right one when you are learning right try to make a lot of projects so again i have added a list of projects that you can make using html css and javascript earlier we were thinking about creating projects using uh, html css now try creating those whole projects with using html css and javascript use some dummy apis search on the web like you know free apis uh, play apis there is something rapid api also you can check it out you will find a lot of fun apis just try it out like this recipe app quiz app other app it it will involve you creating html okay html structure you making that html structure beautiful using css then if you want to make things dynamic 
so this recipe app or you know there is no dad joke app or uh, api so maybe you want to fetch anything from that server we have i said no how to fetch api that is fetching fetching api so use that api and then try some play fun apis and try to make a projects out of it simple projects involving whatever things i have covered above uh one thing i'll tell you yaar creating a project using html javascript and css is very difficult a lot of people what they do that is even i have done this thing myself okay i never created any project in html css and javascript when i was just starting i did not had anybody to tell me ki what is good what is not good i directly started writing things on react and then after learning react then uh, i came back and i started learning about um, the, uh, this dom manipulations and all those things two and a half to three years back it, uh, there was not that much awareness okay so again telling you instead of you coming back to these topics after uh, covering react and all it's good you should learn things in your own pace and creating a project in javascript if you know that right hats off you are really phenomenal again one of the recommended projects i'll suggest is that all uh, try not try but always have a portfolio website see at the end of the day why are we learning all these things and we want to have a good job right so how do we hunt it we post things on twitter or linkedin and we may have a good portfolio where all the projects are included so portfolio app is must to do in this resources i have added some of uh, these apps they are created with, uh, by somebody on youtube it's difficult to create uh, apps on your own at first go but you can always refer to some tutorials and make your first initial projects so i have added uh, you know two resources here two playlists which will tell you how to make all these apps so now uh, if you make three apps a three projects using js also no trust me your concepts your fundamentals would be too good now if you know javascript so nicely right so jumping into there any of the frameworks will be a cake walk because your fundamentals are strong so coming to some common frameworks so these five frameworks angular react view ember and backbone you know we have swelt also and we have jquery also these seven folks okay these seven folks are the most popular frameworks that exists in javascript uh, that are made using javascript if i show you the trends i was just before the session i was comparing so we have this google trends right i was comparing how many people uses uh, react on the on, in this whole world versus angular versus swelt versus ember and you see the graph react it's backed up with by facebook right it's it's community support it's been used in all the new projects or all the most four five years anybody is starting a new project now they don't start it in angular angular used to be a lot uh, you know popular but now these days it's losing its popularity because of complexity and things on those lines and people are switching to react react is very uh, very popular and if i also just if you are working in this front end domain right uh, you, after learning react or uh, javascript i suggest you should learn react if you know these four things html css javascript and react you will end up getting a very good job when i just joined razor pay right i know i i, I it it might be sounding surprising but i just knew you know i had a good grasp on html css javascript and react and that's it i did not knew anything else everything i learned in razor pay only so what i intend to say is that if you know all these four things in a very nice way you will go places so how you can excel in react so react doesn't have much things okay like i should a long list of uh, things in html css and javascript react is very simple if you again if your basic basics are strong you will feel these things uh, things easy so four things you should learn in react again one is this language essentials so we have a concept called jsx 
so how to write a jsx okay then uh, how J uh, then there are some things uh, not added it in the slide but what is babel what is webpack just read about it five ten minutes give it a read then how we write a jsx these all things will come under languages engines okay so how to do routing so there since react is not a framework again i'm quoting react is not a framework react is a javascript library now you might be asking you know smile what do you mean by a framework and what do you mean by library so basically library is that it's like giving you a very simple example you heard about lodash lodash is a library it is a library which has some functions right maybe to clone deep clone or things on those lines some functions so library is like set of some functions only it uh, with that library you can't create a fully fledged app you need certain things also so react is again a library with the this like say taking one very simple example if you want to have routing right it's not in built present in react again saying since it's a library it's not a framework if you want to do routing you have to install an external package so it's like this if you want to add something you have to install an external package and you have to make a bundle of packages bundle of libraries to make a project so that is react okay then how react router dom works react router dom it's like you know one of the amazing things that uh, with which you can do the routing again i have added a very good uh, seven eight hours video in that video everything will be covered in this languages engines okay and then routing you know that's it yeah that's more than enough for that initial version then earlier when react was developed right it had two things react functional components and class based components okay a lot of people oh, in older times uh, there were not functional components there were only class components functional components are introduced to recent rec uh, recently like few years back only <coughs> so it was very <coughs> it was very difficult oh, sorry <coughs> So, so um, we have something called hooks. Hooks are compatible with functional components. Now, a lot of people don't write class components. So, about these hooks, it's like you know add-on behavior to uh, you know uh, uh, hooks are basically uh, part of React. They provide support to React essentials or React functional components. Okay. Read about hooks. These days, people don't write again reiterating. People don't write class components because class components, writing a class component is tough, but writing a functional component is very easy. So read about React hooks. And then uh, next is that state management libraries. So what do you mean by state management library? The way how we store information. Or how we store data on the client. Oh, what do you mean by client on the browser? Okay, how do we store data on the browser, or how do we store data locally? So that is done if we have small uh, data, uh, data sets, right? Uh, data, uh, data. Okay. So we do. Uh, maybe we can have something called use state. Use state is a hook. It's a hook for state management. Okay, we can use use state. We we do use uh, something called context API. Context API is again part of one of the hook use context hook. Okay, so we can use that. But there are certain things also. We have something called Redux. We have something a new popular thing that is coming up that is just done. We have that. We have Mopex. What to use? Where to use what? It is not uh, you know. There is no classification key in one project. You cannot use Redux, and you can only use just and there is nothing like that. It's all about you know on what project you are working on, whatever features you want to leverage, how complex you want to make your store, and things on those lines. So there are certain state libraries which are those use state that is a hook that use context context API from hooks 
then most popular ones i'm talking about redux and now these days the stand is also getting very popularity so you can see about the state management in this it's i have I included a playlist here uh, it's like uh, you can see uh, it's basically a state management uh, there is a, a, one guy called uh, this can see called a uh, dot if you want to learn a lot about a front end right he's the creator of you might heard about there is a new framework called K K came up uh, remix he's the creator of remix so he creates amazing content about um, this react and things on those lines you can follow him up then once you know about uh, you know state management then this testing testing is if i have to put testing in very simple words it's like that see everybody can write code everybody can write code even a bot can write code but bot will not be able to write test cases if you any normal developer can write code okay but if you want you to become an exceptional developer you should always learn how to write test cases so react testing library is one way you can write test cases you can use that uh, we have just you can use that and it will actually help you so i've told you about these four concepts which you should learn uh, if you want to make your uh, reacts fundamental strong now again as i have reiterated uh, you should have good projects out of it now and this time i'm not giving you a list where uh, you know um, uh, you know what what projects you should create but i'll give you some ideas how, what is a good project and what is not a good a bad project so if you want to you know and get any job or be proficient in react you should uh, this is my suggestion you should have five four to five good react projects then only you will be able to act. so i'll give you some idea uh, classifications what classify as i said no good project i did not said the word project i said if you want to be a good developer you should have four to five good projects what classifies a good project let's see okay Okay, now you might be thinking, okay, I smile is the very mean. She did not give the ideas of the project, but she is giving us the pointers. Let me think, okay, what what can classify as a good project? So there are a lot of e-commerce apps. There are a lot of you know this movie app, a lot of grocery apps. I'm not that great, dude. Why don't you understand? I'm not that great with ideas. Tell me some ideas. So I I'm not able to think something. is cloning a project is okay right because if we don't have ideas we tend to clone apps right or we tend to clone ideas we uh, we tend to you know copy ideas and give it our own touch right do you do you think it's ethical right this can be a question in your mind is cloning a project okay i'll be honest here yes it's okay do you recognize this i'll not take its name but it's it looks similar to zoom isn't it but it's not zoom if such companies big companies can do this why don't you can create a clone so yes this is there and the next question comes to your mind is that how much time shall i spend to make a good portfolio project or a good project at least 40 hours 40 to 50 hours you should spend on a particular project then only you can consider that project as good project you know spend like 5 hours 2 hours 3 hours on a project and say oh i have created you know this is my eureka moment i have created something very good or 2 3 hours you can do say a project created in 2 3 hours that is a good project spend at least a week spend at least 40 to 50 hours on a project and the next question is that uh, Yeah. Sorry, one second. Okay. Now, I guess there was some issue with the slide. Let me. Okay, I'll delete it later on. So, so what makes a good uh, project? Right? You might be thinking, I am just new into the active smile side. Forty hours invest in a project, but how? i am not that great is watching a tutorial and making a project is okay for your first initial one or two projects it's fine but 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 you know you should have this you know give it own your own touch 
you have taken some 10 hours you are seeing a 10 hour video and you are coding that code right but what a new thing you are introducing so tutorial watching a tutorial and making a project is okay but always add your own touch into that project then next how to find inspirations of projects again it's around you right a clone app uh, you know uh, app say instagram for developers where they can code uh, share the code code snippets uh, 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 you know uh, uh, app that just have tech spaces see around you and you will end up finding a lot of inspirations oh yes should my project be full stack because i am having a front end project right is it okay i should have a full stack project it, should, it is like full, full stack projects are considered to be good projects because they have end to end functionality i'll tell you where if you we are front end engineers we are not back end ones we are aiming to have good react projects right so for for the back end you can always rely on dummy apis you can always there is something called msw mock service worker you can always use that you can use amplify yeah oh yeah there is something called mockable api mock b you can use that there are a lot of things they are like spend one hour and your backend is ready then last question is that how many core features my app should have in general uh, in a good project uh, your uh, app should have four to five core features four to five correct functionalities and you are good so these all points if any of the projects you are making they have then you should consider that is good project again i as i said in the earlier of the session i'll provide some of the react projects ideas and inspirations i provided a link here you can open it up it has nine or ten good react projects ideas you can just see it up then last but not the least you say me i have learned html css react JavaScript. then what next what should i do next so there are react uh, okay front end is not only about you know learning html css javascript and one framework it's beyond that also what you can learn is that you can learn typescript you can learn testing frameworks like just yeah uh, this rtl react testing library then there is something called very interesting thing react query if you have you know very complex apis react query is used there you can get, go, go into the field of animations you can always learn about framework motion then msw as i talked about right if you want to have a mock uh, backend then you know if you want to integrate with graphql apis then stripe this there is something called AppSync that is completely free aws it have you can you know spin up a, a, a graphql backend so try you know making an app with graphql backend graphql is very common very popular also if there are two kind of popular apis one is rest and one is graphql so try making things with graphql api also okay then how to write ci cd then how to write yaml scripts then what is hydration i'll not tell you what is hydration then what is react response try that out then you know some code optimization techniques code splitting then you know image optimization read about them it's like ocean okay this list can go on and on these are some things came in in my mind but what you can learn next just one tip I'll give you after I I know I have been blabbing from one hour. I'll just wrap it up in one minute. So one thing I'll a uh, one tip I'll give you uh, from me uh, you know um, as a well vision. So if you want to be a you know good developer, just avoid tutorial hell. I only suggested you you know see one or two tutorials of a project, but again rely on documentations. Don't be you know tutorial person. It's like it's a trap. Avoid it. I'm adding some of my favorite uh, YouTubers, some coding communities and people on Twitter. You can follow. They do a lot of great things in that things on web development. And yeah, that's pretty, <clears throat> pretty much from me. I'm open to questions. You know, you can shoot me up with any questions. Um, Monica, over to you, please. 
Uh, all right. Thank you, ma'am. That was a very informative session, and I'm sure everyone here le learned a thing or two. Uh, we can move on to the questions now. Uh, so the uh, first question by Avni Ramya is: uh, I'm new to this industry. What all skills uh, will I need to be successful? Um, that's what the session whole was about, right? I talked about skills only, but yeah, if you are talking about technical skills. in person if you are referring to the front end role again html css javascript react there are some go to uh, you know task skills you should uh, be having apart from th this technical excellence there are some things you should be uh, very good in this you know your soft skills how to communicate right then the another important thing is that a lot of people can write code okay again a lot of people can write code but who can write a quality code that matters a lot so it's like that um, again if you can write the clean code then you can be successful and you know the way you express yourself so these are some things you need okay thanks a lot ma'am uh, we don't have much time i think uh, it's already 7 6 and uh, i'm sure you have more valuable things uh, and uh, okay so uh, would you like uh, anything else would you like to uh, add any other comment no that's actually pretty much all from my side just one suggestion to all don't ever stuck in this tutorial hell that's the <laughs> one tip i have for everyone because i see a <laughs> lot of people yeah, i mean people are like okay you know uh, seeing some video from the internet from from youtube and then flaunting on twitter or on linkedin are i made this as a as a it's like it's just hypothetical come to a real life example take a real life problem if you can't code it then what's a even a point you have you know a lot of big projects so, definitely yeah. i guess there's a lot of difference between the theory and the practical so okay uh, all right so the wrapping up uh you guys can uh, visit our uh, link below for any upcoming information you'll find all the information regarding our webinars workshops offline sessions uh you can also join us on discord and i promise you we are a very welcoming uh, community there you can just write hi on the uh, welcome section and we'll just invite you right in also uh we'll be having hackathon in hybrid mode we are having multiple sessions and today was only the second session and there are going to be a lot more in the future uh you can click on the bell icon to be notified about them and uh, we are also having the offline session of htm at manav rashna international university on 17th and 18th september and uh, we hope to see all of you there very soon you can also follow our instagram page for regular updates on uh, hackathon so that's all and uh, once again i'd like to remind you to join our discord server and uh, to press the bell icon for uh, all the updates and um, of course this session was so informative and you can just imagine how much information you can get from all the other uh, eminent speakers that we'll be having here and um, it's very important to learn from people who uh, who are already there in this uh, field so with that we, uh, our session is coming to an end today and um, thanks a lot for joining us and uh, i hope we'll see you again very soon